yesterday what we talked about we talked about two basic financial statements i started with three and then only talked about two i didn't talk about the third and i am not going to talk about the third today also we talked about the balance sheet we talked about the profit and loss statement what we said was balance sheet is nothing but a list of what you own and what you owe in a way or the other way to put it is it is just indicative of the sources of your funds out there that is what where all you are getting your funds out there that is what i talked about i said you get as capital an entity you borrow money from a bank you borrow money from a financial institution that is all what you call it as your source of fund out there. i repeat that for example i said there is what is called as an entity concept in an entity what i said is you are an independent person you file your tax returns independently the entity or the organization or the company or whatever name you call it that also files its tax return that is a separate entity i start a business i said i start a business arun kumar and co i contribute capital to the business the business owes that money back to me on the day they wind up so that is what we talk about as liability plus capital or capital plus liability using that capital i can that cap moment i said capital is there that is i contribute 10 lakhs out there then i there is capital out there then what happens the business or the company owns the 10 lakhs whatever you have actually contributed that is whether it is in the form of cash whether it is in the form of a, what i call it is a banker's check or whether it is in the form of whether it is in kind if you are contributing in the worth 10 lakhs in the form of furniture and building etc that entire thing is owned by the enterprise or what you call it as it's an asset for the enterprise out there now beyond that your balance sheet or the statement of what you own and what you owe is an indicative of what is there what you own or what you owe as on a particular day that's all that is that position can keep changing every minute your cash position keeps changing every minute it can change so it's on a particular day so when we talk about a balance sheet we say balance sheet as of 31st of march balance sheet as of 30th of 31st of december balance sheet as of 30th of september balance sheet as of 15th of that is on that day what is the position whereas when we talk about what we call it as a profit or loss statement or the other way to put it is income statement it always gives you the resultant revenue and expenditure that is income and expenditure the statement of income and expenditure over a certain period of time it might be the period of time can be decided by you it can be one day one year one month one quarter and so on and so forth so the resultant obviously will be the profit or loss in the process out there that is what we basically arrived at now when we talk about capital itself when i talk about in this particular case when i say capital we look at multiple forms of it all of us know we would have commonly heard about what is called as equity there is something else also what we call it as preference there is a third aspect what we talk about is debt capital am i right okay now when we talk about equity when we talk about preference when we talk about debt let me first finish that out and then let us go to the other two debt is nothing but a loan a borrowing that's all a debt is nothing but a loan or a borrowing a with a rate of interest which could be fixed which could be variable depending on the agreement and this part some debts are also what you call it as it it could be uh, secured as well as it could be unsecured also all that depends on the kind of arrangement you do for getting the debt the question that might come in now is is debenture a debt yes or no some of you will be owning some debentures i am very sure that many of you would be trading how many of you trade ah then you should 
when we say debenture, if I have to put it very crudely, not a textbook definition, let me make that also very, very clear, very, very crudely, debenture is nothing but a borrowing, a I am collecting from the general public, that is all. If I am putting it very crudely, please do not say that it is, this is not there in the textbook, this is not a textbook definition, this is very, very crude definition, that is all for your understanding. It is a form of debt which I am trying to collect from the public. In the sense, imagine I need about a crore of money. I can go to the bank and borrow if bank is prepared to give me. I can go to a financial institution and borrow if they are prepared to give me. I can go to a what you call it a strategic investor and then take money from him, etc. All possibilities or I can also issue what is called as debentures to the public in the sense that I can denominate this 1 crore into 10,000 debentures of what is called as 10,000 debentures of 100 each, yeah, 10,000 debentures of 100 rupees each. 10,000 is 100 is 1 crore, yeah, no, yes, 1 lakh, huh? then make it 1, 1 lakh debentures into 100, okay, fine, I am very bad at zeros, anyway. So, 1 lakh debentures of 100 rupees each. So, I issue this 1 lakh debentures of 100 rupees each and anybody can buy that debenture out there by paying 100 rupees out there. Imagine you buy 10 debentures, 10 into 100, you, pay, you buy it for about 1000 rupees, you buy 10 debentures out there, these debentures will also have a fixed rate of interest. I would say it is a 8 percent debenture, it is a 10 percent debenture, it is a 6 percent debenture, etc. That means, a year on year on your investment of 1000 rupees or uh, per debenture is 100 rupees, you will get an interest of about 6 percent out there. And it also has a life, it is redeemable at the end of 5 years or 7 years or whatever it is. Redeemable means at the end of 5 or 7 years, the debenture ceases to exist, the company takes back the debentures and gives you the money. Money is whatever you have invested initially, that is debenture. It is a form of what you call it as a, a debt collected by the company from the public, very crude definition. Now, there can be various differences in that, secured, unsecured. No, fixed deposit slightly different, sir. I will come to fixed deposit also. Yes, we will come to that also, sure. Normally, we say bond, bond if it is a little long term out there, it is 8 years, 10 years, etc. We, we term it as a bond. There are legal differences in that, let us not even get into that. There are legal differences in that, let us not even get into that. Fixed deposit, he said, fixed deposit, I do not denominate in units. Fixed deposit becomes difficult for me to trade, whereas debentures I can trade in the market, sir. I can trade in the market. Fixed deposit is basically a lump sum money what you put in and then it you it is like you having your fixed deposit in the bank, slightly different from that. Now, when we talk about debentures, it can be secured, unsecured, convertible, non-convertible, oh God, you go, we go, I mean various possible combinations out there. Secured, all of you know, what is it? It is secured against a particular asset of a company. That is in the event of the company defaulting, then what happens? You can go and take over that particular asset, sell it, recover your money and come out. No questions now? Because I am expecting some. Ah, that is, that, is, that is what exactly I was expecting. Who will do that? How can everybody get together and do it, etc.? Now, there are processes for that. There is a trustee who is appointed by the company, who is expected to act on the behalf of the investors. So, in the event of the company defaulting, the trustee goes, take over, takes over the asset, sells it and distributes the money, whatever he gets it to the investors out there. If he is able to clear off all the investors and excess money is there, that will go back to the company. If there is what is called as, if he is not able to dispose the asset for the value of what he has to pay the investors, the investors take the hit out there. Unsecured, no security, that is all, simple, no security on your investment out there. Then why should everybody go in for secure, unsecured debenture? People will go in only for secure debenture. Am I with you? Risk, return, that is all. Higher the risk. How many of you say here the return? What is the risk in the market, sir? 
risk in the market stock market risk in the stock market higher or risk in the stock market compared to the risk of investing in a fixed deposit in state bank of india higher, higher. higher. so you are assured of higher return no uh, then we all said no you said somebody said higher risk higher return sir higher expected return let us use the word the word expected is very important there with higher the risk accepted higher the expected return that's it even here in debenture when i am doing an unsecured debenture i am expecting higher return i might get it i may not get it if i don't get it i lose that's all with you on this so there are various forms of what is called as just close the door there are various forms of what we call it as your debt out there when i talk about various forms of debt one is what we talked about this debenture secured and secured i can take a loan from a bank i can take a loan from a foreign uh, what do you call it a financial institution i can take a loan from a foreign bank with a forward cover also that is i can raise a loan in japan if you know the interest rates what is happening what's the interest rates out there in japan any idea negative zero i mean they had a zero balance account that is what i call it as no charge on a savings account couple of uh, one or two years back and everybody was so happy about it because earlier they were charged they were uh, being charged to keep money in the account out there if you raise loan in japan out there you will raise it at about a percent or a percent and a half one and a half percent out there then you get a forward cover forward cover for the currency fluctuation with one of your banks in india which will charge about 5 or 6 percent out there and then your landing cost will still be about 7 percent which will be far cheaper than the raising the loan in here itself then why can't everybody go to, go abroad and raise loan uh, well they also make an evaluation and then your company should basically be evaluated by one of these japanese companies should be worth that and then they fund it otherwise they don't so there are various forms of loan now all this debt very importantly if i had to put it most of them carry fixed rate of interest some of them carry variable rate of interest debt as such the debt holders as such does not have or do not have any voting right number 1 in the company number 2 are not eligible for a share in the profits of the enterprise also all they are eligible is basically to get their interest on the amount they invested as well as that is the uh, the refund of the principal and the interest or what we call it in a uh, simple term like debt service that's all what they are eligible for and nothing beyond that right now i move to the next set of guys out there what we call it as the preference shares fellows a glorified form of debt again very crude definition please note again very crude definition a glorified again preference shares fixed rate of interest no voting right only thing is denominated in the form of shares out there again i raise about 10 crores i need to raise from the market in the form of preference share i can issue 1 crore preference shares at 10 rupees each to the public again with a specified interest rate upfront itself i will indicate the interest rate people subscribe to it every year on year they get that interest and at the end of what you call it as 20 years now the stipulated time is 20 years extendable up to 30 years out there at the end of 20 or 30 years this preference share is redeemed that is the company takes back and then gives the money out there now is preference share tradable yes preference share is also tradable now when the company buys back from me what is the price they will give will they give the market price or will they give the price at which i have invested that is 10 rupees out there when it on the date of redemption both will actually be the same whether the market price and the and the face value cause so called face value of the share face value is the only value at which it is denominated both of it will basically be the same out there at whatever price they have demanded for me only interest you are getting interest is what you get during a period more or less a debt concept as of now not very active uh, am i right yeah not very active out there more or less a debt concept it was very active in the 80s and uh, early 90s etc more or less debt now because now why should people go in for a preference share when they can go in for a debt i'll come to you 
simple risk return right in the event of a dissolution of the company the debt holders are settled first if at all money is remaining then it will go to the equity preference holders if at all money is remaining after settlement of the preference shareholders it will go to the equity holders so risk return variable what do you call it as your interest rate please note here at this stage preference shares are uh, that, that is interest on preference shares i'm sorry interest on preference shares are not tax deductible because the interest on the preference share or dividend on the preference share is paid after the tax is deducted for the company crowd sourcing let us uh, as of today what is called as you can source it but how are you you sourcing is a very simple word but finally as an accountant i am looking at how is it denominated you can do crowd sourcing and denominate as as debt it will sit as debt you can do crowd sourcing denominate it as equity yes it will sit as equity that's all i am worried only only about these three terms nothing beyond that yes sir is it excel external commercial all that borrowing will be debt sir that is a beautiful that's all it's a simple four letter word. that's all debt dbt it will all sit there any borrowing sit there it can be external commercial borrowing it can be fcra what is called foreign currency borrowing out there anything it can be all borrowing is debt then you have to pay debt if the, that, that depends on your agreement that depends on the kind of agreement under which you are entering into debt for example somebody can you can get a debt with a five year moratorium and after that a very high rate of interest also yes possible that all depends on your agreement with which you enter when taking debt yes sir the difference between the debt debenture and preference is the time period one the time period second is the risk more is the risk for example if i dissolve the company what do i do i sell what i own all my assets i pay off whatever i owe when i pay off whatever i owe i cannot pay everybody at one shot i will there is a process right i first claim somebody else has it so debt holders have a claim which is for which is higher than what is called as a preference the preference holders get it for me debenture holder he gets debenture holder gets the priority of course there are others also who will get priority even before the debenture holders we will come to that a little later but among these two debenture holder gets a priority <coughs> how this forward cover mechanism what you mentioned that if you raise the sir very simple if i had to put it in a very simple terms i'm not going to get uh, too deeper into it simple i borrow in a million yen out there when i borrow a million yen please note the million yen is not converted to inr and it doesn't come to me million yen is converted into x amount of dollars the dollars again gets reconverted to inr and that is what i get when i have to pay the interest on that 1 million yen dollar and rupee inr can fluctuate dollar and yen japanese yen also can fluctuate now i will have to forego so many inr which for example the interest rate of interest is 2% on that 1 million yen now i have lot of forego so many inr that if converted to dollar and the dollar again converted to yen will result in exactly 2% of that 1 million yen it might be higher it might be lower there is a fluctuation there and this more so happens especially when you have to return that kind of a debt most of these kind of debts are also there for what do you call it as infrastructure projects and so on and so forth out there so the borrowing is huge the repayment is huge so a small variation as the current kind of kind of current prices of the dollar etc can really throw your entire finances out of gear out there very uh, simple and crude definition yes yes ma'am this is the standard this is the standard and if at all what happens is the same debt holder can have what is called as a same asset can be pledged to multiple debt holders also if the asset value is huge in that case you specify who is a primary uh, what do you call it as uh, who has a primary security on that asset who has a subordinate debt then there is a subordinate that is he comes in second etc that is specified among the debt holders otherwise there are these are basic standards out there with you on this normally expected to 
expected to. But if it is a very, very stable company, then unsecured, secured will itself will not have any difference. Right? That is all. Very stable. Which one? That is why he said more or less non existent, very, very, uh, it is almost uh, dead at this stage. Because, see, earlier when transparency was low, then what happens is, and people would want it to be secure. Today, with the kind of training, uh, trading, and the market growing, etc., more or less not very popular as of now. Sir, if oil infrastructure bond, government of India issues, etc., that is basically it is all borrowing. That is all. This is I am talking about it from the point of view of the company. For, a, for, for if an oil company issues a bond, that bond is also part of your debt only. Debt is a very big term, multiple forms of debt. We will visit all that as we go along. Confused in terms of? Provence, you get a fixed rate of interest, you are, it is redeemed at the end of 20 or 30 years. Debt normally uh, debenture redeemed at the end of 5 or 7 years, right. Debentures also get a first rate of fixed rate of interest, could be. Debentures holders have a first claim in the time of dissolution, preference holder, shareholders get in next after that. Time period and the risk. Preference tradable also. Preference is also tradable. Okay. Uh, debenture is also tradable. Uh, how it gets traded, what is the price, we will worry about it after a couple of classes. You mentioned that uh, preference is in a period of 30 years. Yeah. 3 years, 4 years back, there was interest at bond. Even last year, all the bonds issued. Because after 20 years, 3 years, That is a bond. That is a bond. Moment they say bond, it's a bond. No, not preference share. Okay, I have one more question. Sure. Which is like you said, uh, company days, when the company dissolves, the trustee will be appointed. Will be not when the company dissolves, when some of these are issued, it's a trustee is appointed. Okay, and then like uh, you will sell the asset and clear the dimensions. I'm looking at a perspective of in case. Ah. In case I analyze. Process is on. They are trying to sell the asset. Nobody is buying it. That is the only problem. <laughs> the process is on. Huh? I do not know the kind of debts what he has on his books. I have not really analyzed his balance sheet. So, if somebody has a claim which is higher than the banks, then they will get it first. There are the process is on. Whether it will be done in your lifetime, I really do not know. That is all. Yes, Pratish. Yes, sir. Ah. Ah. Which one? The company is dissolved, all assets sold. Where is the equity share holder? I hold equity I hold equity shares of Kingfisher. Fine, I cannot go and take over an aircraft, nothing. Over. That is become what is called as after our uh, Kiravada tissue paper. That is all. If it is a certificate, now it is a demand form. Nothing else, nothing over, gone. That is in the next class, sir. next subsequent course. There is a role of SEBI and other things, we will come to that. Can debentures be converted into equity? Yeah, debentures can be converted to equity. That is what I said. It can be secured, unsecured, convertible, non convertible. Convertible debentures, they would have indicated that these debentures are will be converted to equity shares at the end of whatever is the time period they would have indicated 5 years, 7 years, etcetera. Now, what is the price at which they can convert? Yes, the price range, price range also they would have indicated as of now. Today, what happens is your equity shares is 10 rupee equity share, face value 10 rupees, face value or par value, whatever you call it. I also issue 100 rupee debenture. Then I would also put a rider out there saying that these debentures would be converted at the end of 5 years into equity shares at a price range of say 60 to 100, supposing I have anticipated as a company issuer. So, you have bought it. So, at the end of 5 years, I decide the price based on the market condition, the average price, there is a process for that, then I arrive at a price and then it is converted. You hold only one debenture, the conversion rate is 75, then you get one equity share 
of which has a face value of 10 rupees, market value of 75 rupees plus 25 rupees back in cash out there. That is all that can happen. Again, if it is to be all debentures are not converted. If it is a convertible debenture, it is mentioned, it is indicated right at the time of issue. Yes, Pratishtha, you had a question. Now, I move from here to all these are minor chota. The major part is equity. That is what all of you trade in, that is what all of you buy, etc. Equity shares are nothing but equity shareholders are are basically nothing but the owners of the company. You own 100 shares of Reliance and each share is denominated at 1 rupee face value. That means, you are owner to the extent of 100 rupees of Reliance company. Whatever, supposing it has 100 million shares, a value of 100 million, equity value of 100 million, you are 100 million into whatever is your holding, 100, 100 rupees is your holding to that extent or that percent is basically the holding. Supposing I have a company which has 10,000 equity shares of 10 rupees each and then the capital is 1 lakh, you hold 1000 shares in my company, you are one tenth owner of my company, that is all what it is. When I say the use the word owner in my company, what am I indicating here? You have the decision making right in the company that is you have what is called as the voting right in the company. You have the voting right on all major decisions not the day to day operations and all the major decisions of the company number one. Number two, you are eligible for what we call it as a share in the profits of the enterprise. And that is what gets declared as dividends out there. Now, the immediate question is are all the profits of the firm distributed to the equity holders? Well, yes and no. It can be the percentage, it can be the entire money, or the company need not distribute it, and the company can keep flowing it back into the company itself. For example, yeah, based on the business. Microsoft for the first time declared a dividend couple of years back, till then they had never declared dividend. So, what happens? In the first year, imagine I have what is called as, um, now imagine I have 10,000 shares at 10 rupees each, value is 1 lakh or 100,000 whatever you might call it. Year 1. I make a profit of about 25,000. Year 1, I make a profit of 25,000. That means, each of the 10,000 shareholders, what are they eligible to get? That 25,000 is divided by 10,000. That means, each one is eligible to get about 2.5 rupees as dividends. Now, I do not pay this dividend to the, to the public. I say that I need to expand my business. I need to buy, buy one more machinery, I need to do what I do is I flow back this money back into the business. So, what I do the profit out there which is what is called as belongs to the equity holders I retain it that is R here indicates retained, retained earnings. I retain this profit, retained earnings, I retain this profit in the business and then say now, what I say is how much have I have retained? I have retained about 25,000 out there. So, now what is the value of your shares? Total equity, the value of equity is 1,25,000 because 1 lakh is what you have invested as equity shares. 25,000 is the profit that you have earned which also with the company has earned which belongs to you. So, the value of your equity is 1,25,000. Now, what is the value of your equity share now? The value of equity share is nothing but this 1,25,000 divided by 10,000 out there that is 12.5 is the value of your equity now. That value is what we call it as book value of the equity. Please note that value is what we call it as the book value of the equity. Now, I need to go to the board. This 10 rupees at which it is denominated 
is what we call it as the face value of that equity. This 12 rupees 50 paisa what you are getting out there is what we call it as the book value of the equity. This face value will never change. I can't say never change, will normally not change unless what is called as there is a stock split or a reverse split. Unless there is a stock split or a reverse split. What is a stock split? What is a reverse split? Hold it for some time. We will, we will sort of explain that also. That is what we call it as the face value and what you get out here is what we call it as a book value. Now, moving on further from here, please hold your questions and note down. I will address all that. Now, what happens in this particular case out here? Over a period of time, Over a period of time, first year you have accumulated 25,000. Over a period of time, you keep on accumulating the profit for a couple of years out there. You are not distributing the profits. You are not distributing the profits. You are accumulating the profits out there. And to, at some stage, I see the balance sheet. Maybe after 5 years or 4 years or 6 years or 10 years, whatever is the number of years you can decide. And I see the balance sheet and I will see equity capital is the same thing. But the retained earnings, what is there, has actually become 2,50,000 in the process. So now what happens? My total out here, what we call it out in this particular case, is 3,50,000 or 350,000. The value of each equity share, book value of each equity share is 35 rupees out here. Am I with you on this? This is what we call it normally as net worth of the company. This is what, what I call it as net worth of the company. When I say net worth is eroded, they would already use the word called as you would have certainly read in the papers that net worth is eroded. We will come to that out here in a couple of minutes from now. At this stage, the company now, all this money belongs to whom? Belongs to the equity holders. That is the shareholders, the 10,000 shareholders. Imagine everybody is holding only one share. Let us say everybody is holding only one share, 10,000 shareholders. Now, they are eligible to get the money. Damn it, five years the company has not paid anything. Why have we invested? At this stage, what the company could possibly do is issue what is called as a bonus share or what is called as stock dividends. The other name for it is stock dividends or issue what is called as bonus shares. Again, I am putting all these things in the simplest form, right? I mean, if you actually go back and uh, talk to a company secretary or a chartered accountant working in a company, they can complicate it. But this is the basic principle behind the whole thing. That is all what you have to understand. <laughs>